Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday morning here in Australia and the markets are up again. So now we're at 1.8 trillion, so slowly climbing our way back to the, the $2 trillion mark. But look, this still could be a bit of a dead cat bounce. I don't think it's going to be a full dead cat bounce, but this may still be a bit of a fake out before we hit one more low. And again, I'll get into the charts and show you my reason for that. But I think that's all it will be is a bit of a dead cat bounce. I do not think that we're even remotely close to going into a bear market. We're just seeing a bit of a bear cycle within a bull market. All right, but again, I'll get onto that very shortly. And I've said that before if you've watched my videos. All right, BTC dominance, 40%. So it's actually down a little bit. ETH dominance, 18.5%. And GUI, not too bad, 40 Again, we're still waiting for all that ETH layer 2 solution stuff to come out and really fix it. But optimism, I think, is due to come out very optimistic. Roll up, sorry, is due to come out very soon. You know, there is Polygon super cheap there, and a number of projects have kind of gone that way anyway. But let's move on to the markets. Bitcoin, sort of thirty nine thousand. It was up to around about forty, almost forty one thousand. I think got pretty close, and then rejected a little bit. So it is just kind of bouncing around there abouts. Look, it's green though, all over the market at the moment. Again, this is great. But just beware that we might see one more low before we really start to go high. But look, in the end, if that's true, then if you're in now, you just got to ride that, you know, dip that we might see before we go back up. But again, I never offer you financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. But so far, my personal opinion's done all right for me. So, you know, if you follow what I do, you, you know, remember you're an adult and you're making your own decisions. Don't just blindly follow me. Don't just blindly follow anybody. But if you want average returns, basically do what everyone else is doing. And if you're in crypto, then you're already doing something different. But just be careful. It is highly volatile and very dangerous. But yeah, anyway, I love the space. All right, moving on. We can see a lot of green. And again, we're up 5.9, you know, basically 6% in the last sort of little bit. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? What's done really well? We know a lot of things. We know a lot of things have done really well over the last few days. So engine absolutely ripping at the moment. I'm kicking myself. I w this is the one coin I didn't buy any more of. Uh, I, I looked at engine and I was like, nah, I, I only had so much money. And now <laughs> I could be an up 60% on my engine position. But look, I've got a good position in engine. I bought it quite cheap. So, you know, it is the way it is. But well done engine. I think the NFT space is going to be huge. Uh, Decentraland, again, that's NFT. Chili's is NFT. So it looks like the NFT space at the moment is really pumping. I'm not sure what the news is behind that. But look, I am bullish on the NFT space. But again, the NFTs themselves, it depends on the NFTs. But the NFT space, I think it is going to be an absolute behemoth, particularly uh, in the gaming kind of sector. But look, there are other uses for NFTs outside of that. So I'm, uh, you know, again, I bought some chilies. I may even get some Decentraland. I don't know now that it's pumped up. I've got some Engine. I've got some Audius. So I've, I've got some exposure. Red Fox Labs is another one that looks good. I don't have any of. Was going to buy on the dip, but didn't. Super Farm, I got in on that. All right, now, again, 60%, 25. Lots of 25s. Chainlink starting to make a move. VChain doing nicely. Uh, happy about that. I bought some VChain on the dip. So uh, very happy with that. Again, bought some Chainlink on the dip as well. I think I was lucky enough and got into it at $23, $24. So, yeah. Stoked with that. Look, lots of really good gains. Elrond. I was going to buy some on this dip and didn't. But anyway, you know, you can't own them all. Don't have any Solana. Again, layer uh, one sort of solutions. Polygon, I'm happy about that. Uniswap, I'm happy about that. Look, heaps of coins doing really, really well. Now, are there any coins that haven't done well in the last 24 hours? That'll be interesting. In the top 100 anyway. That's mainly what I focus on. Not really. Leo token, uh, I don't know much about Leo token at all, but it's been uh, fairly brutalized over the last seven days. But look, that may be uh, a good time to buy. Again, I don't know anything about Leo token. I'm not saying buy it, but you want to buy in the red and sell in the green. But look, outside of that, really, it's all the kind of you know stable coins that are just lost a little bit because everyone's spending them. But other than that, it's just simply gains, gains, and more gains. Now, what I want to do is have a look at the Bitcoin chart for a minute. 
All right. So what we can say is really, this is kind of where the cycle started. This is when we had that big capitulation moment, you know, the pandemic and all that. And this is the range that it's been following. And I expect this to kind of continue on. So as I said yesterday, really anywhere under this line is probably buying opportunity. And anywhere above this line is a line to start taking some profits. Now, I'm not saying sell all, because imagine, again, you know, you sell all your Bitcoin here, and that would have been at 7,000, you know, 747. And you're like, I'm going to buy back in when it gets cheaper, when it dips. Well, the thing is, it went up so high by the next time it dipped and got down to its low, it was still worth more than you ever sold it at. So again, you, you just got to be careful. This is a guide. It's not sort of a guarantee. So again, down here, great buying opportunity. But look, it was even better down here. So you don't have to wait for it to get to this, the bottom of this because the thing is it can travel sideways and this is on a 45 sort of degree angle upwards. So again, buying here, while people will probably be thinking, oh no, I can get it sort of cheaper, there's no guarantees. This might be the bottom uh, or it might not, it could go up. So again, just a rough guide. But again, remembering this line in the middle is a good time to start taking some profits. So just little bits of profits. It doesn't mean cash out everything because again, like here, imagine here you're getting right near the top and you're thinking yep i am going to sell here and i'm going to wait to buy in cheaper you never got a chance to buy in cheaper you got a chance to basically buy back in for the same price and you almost got there on this big massive dip but basically you just lost out so again it's take some profits not sell all like if you're just flipping stuff left right and center you're a trader congratulations to you i'm an investor so again that's why when it got down below here i was like yeah, this is just a buying opportunity for me. Doesn't mean it couldn't go lower. No, look, it could come, it could come lower and come down here over the next few days. So to 34,000, I did get a very tiny amount at 34,000. But again, this is just accumulation zone and this could run for quite some time. But what we also need to remember is just because it kind of gets up here doesn't mean, you know, I 100% will sell out everything. Because look at this, imagine you got to here. You have only had a brief opportunity to buy back in cheaper. At the very top of this was still lower than where we kind of dipped here, unless you were lucky to take advantage of those wicks. Hence why you take some profits, but look what happened. You got one opportunity to kind of buy back in roughly where you were but then we traded outside these bands for ages. So this is definitely a good place to start taking some profits, but not sell all. And again, the reason is if you sold all here, you really only had a couple of opportunities to buy back in, but you would have missed out on all of this. Particularly if you sold all of your Bitcoin here, so at 41,000, you never would have had a chance to sell any at 56,000, 58,000, or 60,000 and you would have had to have been lucky to have sort of bought back in cheaper. So again, just a guide, but what I was leading on to is I want you to have a look at this. This is where it started. This is where we basically started the next uptrend. This was, you know, kind of the bottom of the cycle uh, for this part. Again, it's not taking into account the cycle low back in 2000, I think 18, 2019. But this is the channel we're in. And everyone's kind of wondering, where are we in this market? You know, it was this the top or was this, or is this, sorry, a bear trap? Let's have a look at what a bear trap is. So this is actually the bottom. This is before uh, where we were. And we can say takeoff is here. When it fully capitulated, we had that. This is where the takeoff starts. Now look what it does. It goes up goes up goes up we have this big rounding thing and then we have this sell-off and it feels like it's all over we take off it's going up it's going up and we roll over and everyone thinks it's over and this is where i think we are we're on the first really big sell-off we've had some other little sell-offs and this isn't uh you know set up in the candles and stuff this is just a straight line so it doesn't show the volatility that can happen here but i believe this is where we are now, I'm not saying we're right at the bottom of the bear trap though, because we're up here and this could absolutely come lower and could even break out of this a little bit. So we could come down and test that $27,000, $28,000 level that I sort of spoke about uh, in other charts. And this is a different chart, 
before we then sort of travel sideways and start to come back up and make our next move up. So that is what I'm looking for by this could be a dead cat bounce that this then rolls over and again comes down. And look, maybe it stays within these charts, uh, within these lines, because these lines aren't exact. As we can see, they can go above. But if I go back to old ones, and I'll show you some, if this loads quick enough. I don't think it's going to, but basically anyway, I've drawn these charts before. Here we go, hopefully not. It's probably gonna to take too long. Let's just have a look, maybe I've lost them all already. I think I have already lost them. Yep, I have already lost them. Okay, anyway, what I'm saying is sometimes you get these dips where if you followed that line, you get dips below and dips above though. So that's all I'm trying to say at the moment is don't just take it as this only ever trades uh, a little bit above it. It can absolutely dip below it sometimes, travel under it before it makes its way back in. So for me, that's what I think this is. I think this is where we are right now. This is a bear trap. This is before to panic and shake out all the weak hands and get everyone so scared that they really think this is what's happening here, that it's a bull trap and it's gonna roll over, it's a bear trap, in my opinion, not financial advice, and that means all of this is still yet to come. Now, I don't think it's gonna be easy, and it doesn't just flip over. So going back to here, I don't think this just basically turns over. I think we absolutely could travel sideways, we could have some more upside and then come back down again, some more upside and then come back down again before we finally start to make our way up. There is big players here now, they're using all the old tricks, the Wyckoff, uh, manipulation and all the rest of it. So this this run is going to be different to the last ones, but not so different that it still doesn't somewhat resemble the old ones. It's just not going to be exactly the same. So we've already shown that this is the chart that it's following. It can break out above, and trust me, there will be a moment in here somewhere where it breaks down below. And again, it could be somewhere up in here, because again, this isn't a chart, particularly somewhere in here, we could have something that makes it, so somewhere around about there where it kind of levels out. And again, this isn't a chart with all the choppy stuff. It's just a straight line. We could get something further up here that breaks down a little bit below before it comes back up. All right, anyway, moving on. So that's, uh, yeah, my chart analysis for the day and what I think is going on. Federal Reserve Bank President says most cryptocurrencies are worthless. The President of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, St. Louis, James Bullard, says that most cryptocurrencies are worthless. I agree, most of them are, 100%. Uh, There's thousands of them out there at the moment. I think there might be 100 out of the thousands, and even 100 might be pushing it, that actually have value and are changing something and are doing something. Other than that, they're just crap in my personal opinion and look i've shown you generally what i'm invested in a number of those could be crap i don't know you know time will be able to tell excuse me tell me whether i'm right or wrong but i like to think i've done at least a little bit if not a lot of research into most of them some i haven't look in all fairness i just picked them uh, from the chart because they were down so low but again i've heard enough about them to think that they're at least going to be around for a little while and they're not rug pulls but again, we'll have to wait and see. Now he noted that if cryptocurrency can facilitate transactions that are difficult to make in conventional currencies, then they will have a purpose and might circulate alongside the national back currencies. I agree, and more so stable coins and things like that. The cryptocurrency, I think we're gonna to have to get rid of that currency thing. I think we're gonna to have to call it just crypto within the future. Uh, Bitboy was saying that earlier and I've totally, I totally agree with him and I've been thinking that for a while. Because utility tokens aren't currency. They're utility tokens. There are some currency ones like Bitcoin, like Litecoin, um, you know, like Nano and things like that. They're literally just currencies. Pretty much all the rest of them, they're not. They're utility tokens. So they won't be used as currency. They can be used similar to currency, but they won't be currency. So I completely agree with them. I think most of them are absolutely worthless, but that's not to say you can't make money from them. If you can get in during a bull run and get out before it's all over and double and triple your money, then you know, I guess they're not really worthless, but in the long term, they are probably worthless. In the short term, there's some massive money to be made, 
But again, I, that's I'm not really into kind of jumping in and trying to flip stuff. I do it on occasions, but I don't do it regularly. All right, this is massive news. So PayPal will let customers withdraw crypto. So the problem with PayPal at the moment is, well, number one, the fees are expensive, but people are happy to pay that. Uh, but a lot of people don't want to leave their crypto on PayPal. They want to be able to take it off and do other stuff with it. So it sounds like that's what they're going to do. So global payments giant PayPal plans to let users withdraw cryptocurrencies to third-party wallets, its blockchain uh, lead says. So this is massive news uh, for the crypto space in general. Now, a lot of people will be happy to buy crypto on PayPal and just leave it on PayPal because PayPal is insured and things like that. So it does have its upsides. It's just its fees at the moment are really, really expensive. But I do think in the future they will come down uh, once there's bigger adoption and it probably will be a fairly safe place to have it. But still, not your keys, not your crypto. We need to remember that as well. But PayPal is pretty trusted, regulated and all the rest of it. So, you know, they're moving in the right direction. I think this is very big news though. Now, the winner of Ethereum's market crash was Uniswap and DeFi exchanges. ETH's 70% decline from its all-time highs pushed DEX volumes and daily trade numbers into record territory while battle-testing stablecoins. So stablecoins have won. And really, DeFi has sort of won as well. I mean, we've seen one of the biggest corrections ever. And, you know, there, there were no doubt some, you know, very new projects and ones that are hardly known that have failed the test. But Aave held, Synthetics held, Compound held, uh, Maker held. And we remember the Black Swan event that Maker had issues back then. They've all come through it. They are now starting to prove that they are battle tested. I think DeFi is going to be massive. And I'm not saying any of the ones I just mentioned will be the ones to survive. I like to think a few of them are. But, you know, time will tell. But they are now truly battle tested. And, you know, they made it through the Black Swan event, the pandemic crash. They made it through this, the biggest crash uh, we've seen basically in a long time within a sort of bull run. But then again, not really. We've seen 82% back in the early days. They're starting to prove their worth. So Uniswap benefited the most. The crash may have served to battle test the DeFi ecosystem, according to data firm Glassnode. And again, I completely agree. That's exactly what I thought when I saw this crash. I was just thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just waiting to hear news of, you know, Aave had something happen and they had to liquidate and Maker did and Synthetics and we didn't hear anything about like that. We heard nothing like that. I think it's clear DeFi is here to stay. And again, you know, particularly if you were managed to buy the dip, I mean, they're still down quite a lot from their old all-time highs. I think they're going to go past those all-time highs and absolutely skyrocket from there. Which ones? You know, you've got to make your own decision up. But again, I think we're somewhere down here. So we were up here. So whatever prices, let's take synthetics. I think it got to $28. And uh, then it got down to, I think $11 was the cheapest. I'm spewing my money came late. I, I bought it, I rebought it at about $13, but I bought some at $24, $28 as well. But if we're here on synthetics, if, and it's a big if, there's no guarantees in life, if it can maintain and continue to grow, and let's, you can use anything, Aave, you know, Uniswap, Compound, whatever, if we're basically down here, imagine what they're going to be like when they get up here. And I'm not trying to sell up here. I, I will miss it. I'm going to sell through here. Just bit by bit, little bit by little bit. And again, I plan on selling pretty much half of all my altcoins. Uh, and I will sell some of my Ethereum and I'll sell some of my Bitcoin. And this is really where I'm going to start to sell it. And it's just going to be bit by bit. And then if I get it wrong, I know that uh, and again, maybe I start to sell here thinking I was down here. I know that there's going to be a dip and then it's going to bounce and it's on that bounce that I'll try and make up uh, those gains and aggressively sell there. And then again, I won't be able to time this perfectly because there will be little dips in here and it'll continue to go down. But when there's a sort of continued uptrend for you know a couple of days, I'll be sort of aggressively trying to sell some in there. If I've missed it, I really think I'll do all right. And this is where I plan on selling. All right, moving on. Crypto startup Reach raises $12 million to build on Ethereum and Algorand. Again, this kind of money isn't coming in if we're literally going into a bear market. 
Reach aims to simplify decentralized app development across blockchain platforms. So both Ethereum and Algorand. I remember hearing Algorand uh, is building a stablecoin for one of the Pacific Island nations, like a Kiribati or something like that. I can't remember what it was. So Algorand. Uh, very smart guy who's sort of started it can't remember his name but I know he's been around the space for a very very long time uh, and you know again I haven't heard too much about Algorand but good to see they're still in the space and doing stuff so look there's a whole article here I won't go too much into it but again 12 million that's what they raised that's not what happens in a bear market at the bottom they might start to see some stuff like this but not when things are just crashing 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 smart money knows that that's probably all this is great opportunity to get in because they're going to be able to take advantage of all this blackrock uh still studying bitcoin and they're wary of market volatility <laughs> they're totally in already Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, today talked about Bitcoin's volatility. The CEO has previously shown interest in the currency. Now, they've invested in uh, Grayscale. I'm quite sure of it. I'm pretty sure they have invested heavily into Bitcoin there uh, and Ethereum and other things. It's still too early for the world's largest asset manager to invest. Again, I'm almost 100% confident. And again, I could be wrong. And according to this article, maybe I am wrong. But I'm pretty sure they uh, have invested with Grayscale. So, you know... This is that kind of FUD stuff again. They probably have taken mass advantage of this dip at the moment uh, and they're not just ready to come out and say they have because they're still buying the dip. It's not until they've kind of built their position that they will then say, yeah, we believe this is a new asset class and all the rest of it. This is what they say to keep people scared to hopefully continue to push the price down and I'm quite confident they are buying this dip. But again, look, that's my opinion, not financial advice. And again, I'm pretty sure I heard that BlackRock had already bought into uh, Grayscale. All right, more news for Polygon. This is just going to be a. This is going to be so big. I can't believe uh, that I was lucky enough to buy and hold. Now, Polygon developers are set to launch tools to enable the creation of Ethereum-compatible standalone chains and Layer Two protocols. So Polygon has announced the launch of its SDK stack that will allow developers to easily deploy their own Ethereum connected blockchains. So they don't have to be, uh, you know, on the Ethereum mainnet, they can build their own side chains. Now SDKs or software development kits are single installation packages that contain tools necessary for seamless app creation. Everyone seems to think that when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, it'll be able to handle everything. It won't. It is going to be the main chain and it's going to need a number of side chains. And that's what Polygon is now doing as well. They are a side chain. They are a layer two. They're now going to give you the capabilities and software to build your own layer two stuff. So your own chain that is connected to the Ethereum chain. But guess what? Then you're going to be able to build bridges from those, you know, to Cosmos, to Polkadot and all those sort of things. This is where the space is going. It's not just going to be Ethereum 2.0 will handle everything. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, what happens to Polygon when Ethereum 2.0 gets rolled out. The people that are already on Polygon aren't suddenly going to go, well, now we're getting off Polygon. They're going to stay on the Polygon network. Then they can also look at building, uh, you know, their own side chain if they want to. But they don't have to. Polygon works. It's great. They are using a multi-facet layer system. So they're going through optimistic roll-ups and uh, I forget what the other one other ones are called now, but they are a multi-layer system. They're not just one. So they're not just optimistic. Uh, again, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not that uh, tech savvy when it comes to it all, but they're a multi-layer system. So I think this is massive. Now again, Polygon contains several plug and play modules with custom made solutions for parameters like consensus and synchronization. I don't think ETH 2.0 is gonna destroy Polygon at all. I think it is just going to enhance the space and this price will continue to go up. You know, there's people talking about $10. I could not imagine what it'll be like at $10. I'm not even sure it can hit $10. But if it does, and it's currently trading for $2, that's a 5x. And if you bought in prior to $2, prior to a dollar, prior to 10 cents, whatever, then the gains have already been life-changing. Uh, and for me, I am, you know, 
I got some under two cents. I got most within that two cents, but I got some at around about three cents. And I've bought some more since as well, but hardly any. My sort of average buying price is around uh, two and a half cents thereabouts. So I've almost 100x. I need to get to about, uh, sorry, three dollars, and I will have 100x pretty much all the money that I've put into Polygon. So I'm really, really happy with that. But again, I may still even buy some more and then that'll bring my price up and it has to go higher. But it's just the upside potential that I'm looking at. All right, Coinbase. Again, what makes, you know, people are so worried that this is a dead cat bounce and it could be a little bit of a dead cat bounce, but we're going down even lower and into this bear market. I don't think Coinbase is gonna invest millions of dollars in a market that's going to go down a lot lower. Coinbase leads $6 million funding in uh, for Indonesian crypto exchange. Pintu is a new cryptocurrency exchange in Indonesia licensed as a crypto broker under, I don't even know how to say that, but, but Pebti uh, and Ministry of Communication uh, and Informatics. The developing nations, you know, Indonesia, Africa, third world countries and all the rest of that, uh, the emerging markets, is where they want to get in nice and early and Coinbase know that. That's why they're getting, getting in there. That is where they're going to have the biggest growth. Tons of people, and I'm not saying specifically Indonesia, but places within Asia and again Africa and all sorts of other places are unbanked. They have no banking. Crypto will bring, will bring banking to them and it will be a huge space. That is why they're getting in. Coinbase aren't going to be investing millions of dollars uh, if it's about to go into a bear, full bear market and they could get in for a lot less uh, at a lot better price later on. More massive news, All right? Apple is headhunting a business development manager with experience in cryptocurrencies. So it seems Apple is moving forward with its plans to adopt cryptocurrencies. The giant, and they are giant, they're up there with one of the biggest stocks in the world, companies, the giant is now seeking experts from the fintech world including cryptocurrencies. They can see what's coming. They are absolutely going to move into the space. They have no choice. They will get left behind. They will invest in cryptocurrencies. Will it be Bitcoin? Will it be Ethereum? Could it be their own coin that they come out with? Who knows? I think they will eventually get some Bitcoin. Uh, I think they will eventually get some Ethereum. And will they now maybe develop their own cryptocurrency? entirely possible i think all stocks will eventually go onto the blockchain but again i think we're still a ways from that but that's what i believe all right last but not least cryptocurrency market more resilient now compared to 2018 says jpm analyst so after comparing the most recent violent crash with the same developments in 2018, a senior strategist from JP Morgan Chase & Co. concluded that the state of the market is now significantly more resilient and robust than three years ago. I completely agree it is. If we had have seen a 50% uh, correction you know, in the last market, that literally would have been it. It would have just continued to tumble and tumble and tumble. And we basically would have gone back down to prices that we had a seen, you know, near the Black Swan event uh, in 2020. It hasn't. It's holding for now. Uh, and I think it will hold. Again, I'll just go back to this chart. I'm not saying we couldn't come a little bit lower and even break down out of this into kind of the 27 ish thousand dollar range. And then take a while trading underneath here before we move back up into here and finally break to the upside. I do see that uh, happening, that again, we break to the upside. I don't think there's any chance we're going into a legitimate bear market at the moment. This is just a bear trend, sort of a bearish cycle within a broader bull market slash bull cycle. All right, love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think that we could see a little bit of a dead cat bounce here and roll over, or do you think that was kind of it? Do you think that was capitulation at 30,000? Love to know your thoughts down below. Please do me one big favor at the very least. If you've watched my video, please hit the like button. I am really trying to get my content out there and it doesn't get out there if people aren't at least watching it and then particularly hitting the like button and leaving a comment down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully we're back on that gain train at the moment. That's good for everyone. And I'll see you next time.